The vast majority of people's perceptions of heavenly beings are incorrect, at least according to the Bible. Today we're going to focus on biblically accurate heavenly beings, but before we do, let's explore how the vast majority of people incorrectly view these celestial entities. Typically, when someone thinks of heavenly beings, the common image that pops into many minds is that of angels, often portrayed as human like figures with large feathery wings, often bearing halos and sometimes carrying harps or trumpets. These figures, deeply embedded in the cultural and religious tapestries, are typically depicted as human-like beings adorned with wide feathery wings and radiant halos, and occasionally musical instruments like harps and trumpets. This depiction heavily influenced by Renaissance art, literature, and later popular culture. Historically, art and literature have played pivotal roles in shaping our understanding and perception of such celestial entities. From the ethereal paintings of Raphael and Botticelli, to the verses of John Milton's Paradise Lost. Angels have been given human qualities, making them relatable and yet otherworldly. This anthropomorphism reflects humanity's desire to comprehend the divine, to bridge the vast chasm between the mortal and the eternal. Furthermore, movies, television shows, and even holiday imagery, particularly in the Western world, have further solidified this depiction, often diluting the profound spiritual significance of these beings into mere decorative ideas or fantastical characters. Heavenly beings are not cute or fluffy beings that spend their days playing with harps. They are unimaginably powerful beings. They do not look like Cupid. They are real spirit beings with real power. The sheer fact that these heavenly beings are able to stand in the presence of the Lord and see the face of the Lord reveals their power. You and I in our mortal bodies, and with all of its sin, cannot stand and see the face of the Lord. For the word of God tells us, No man has seen God and lived, but angels can see the Lord. Listen to how angel Gabriel introduces him. Luke 1 and 19, the angel replied and said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand and minister in the very presence of God, and I have been sent by him to speak to you and to bring you this good news. What an introduction. Gabriel stands in the very presence of the Lord. If you and I were to see the face of the Lord in all of his holiness and all his glory, our spirit would leave our body faster than we can blink. Angels. One angel killed 185,000 Assyrian soldiers in one night. Angels. When angels shut the lion's mouths. Angels. An angel rolled away the stone from Jesus' tomb. Angels. One angel guided Philip to the Ethiopian eunuch for a divine appointment. Angels. An angel freed Peter from Herod's prison. These benevolent beings are sent by God as messengers, protectors, and guides for humanity. However, cherubim, while under the broad umbrella of heavenly entities, stand distinctly apart from the traditional angels, both in function and appearance. They are not standard angels, and they are not even archangels. They are unique. They are their very own type of heavenly being, distinct from standalone angels. The Bible gives us several detailed descriptions of the cherubim that starkly contrasts the commonly held perception of angels. The most vivid portrayed cherubim is in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 1, 5 through 11. Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of man, and every one had four faces, and every one had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man, and the face of a lion on the right side and they four had the face of an ox on the left side, they four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched upwards. Two wings of every one were joined, one to another, and two covered their bodies. Ezekiel 10, 20, and 22. This is the living creature that I saw under God of Israel by the river of Chabar, and I knew that they were the cherubims. Every one had four faces apiece, and every one four wings. And the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings, and the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river of Chebar. Their appearance in themselves, they went every one straight forward. In Ezekiel's vision, cherubim are described as having multiple faces, that of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. 
right here in the appearance of this heavenly being, we encounter one of the most intriguing aspects of the creature. It has multiple faces, that of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle. So we have a heavenly creature that has the faces of creatures on this earth. We know that cherubim were created before the creation of the world, because in the book of Job we see the sons of God, which were angels, shouted for joy when God created the earth. From Job 38, 6-7, we clearly understand that angels predate the creation of the earth. Therefore, they also predate the creation of all living creatures on this earth. In simple terms, that means they predate the creatures that they resemble. Isn't that intriguing? After studying this area of scripture, I never looked at humans, lions, oxen, and eagles the same way. This point might not blow your mind, but when I understand that this heavenly creature has these four faces, yet it predates all of these four creatures, I was completely amazed. So here we have the cherubim. And I think we can all agree that cherubim are unique creatures. They bear the resemblance of earthly creatures that were not created when the cherubim themselves were created. This is why I describe these wonderful heavenly creatures as the most mysterious ones, because they clearly have a connection to the earth. But the Bible does not reveal a tremendous amount of information about them. Imagine the sight of this extraordinary creature before your eyes, the cherubim, as described in the passages of Ezekiel. Four faces gaze upon you, the human, the lion, the ox, and the eagle all unified within, one being its form, human-like yet ethereal adorned with four wings that seem to carry it effortlessly through the heavens. Straight legs and feet like polished bronze reveal a majestic presence, while beneath those mighty wings, human hands exude both power and grace. Can you fathom the mix of emotions flooding through you at the sight of this celestial being? Fear and wonder intertwine as you find yourself both terrified and moved by its presence. The realization of standing before a creature with such divine significance humbles your soul. For the cherubim is no ordinary being. They guard the very presence of the Almighty. Can they be classified as an angel? Cherubim are a specific type of celestial beings mentioned in the Bible. They are often associated with angels and are considered a high-ranking order of angels. However, it is important to note that cherubim and angels are not necessarily interchangeable terms, as not all angels are described as cherubim in the Bible. Cherubim are tasked with guarding God's presence and serving in heavenly worship, they are closely associated with God's throne. On the other hand, angels in a more general sense refer to the spiritual beings who serve as messengers of God and carry out various tasks according to God's will. The term angel is used in a broader sense to describe different ranks and functions of heavenly beings, including messengers, protectors, and guides. Some angels are mentioned by name in the Bible, such as Michael and Gabriel, and they have specific roles in certain biblical events. So while cherubim can be considered a specific type of angel, not all angels are necessarily cherubim. Cherubim have unique characteristics and roles that distinguish them from other angelic beings mentioned in the Bible and the spirit world. There are many celestial beings that we can't fully understand. We know some of them, like the seraphim, fiery creatures who stand in God's presence and shine with holiness. There are also archangels, powerful messengers from God, who bring important messages to us. And the book of Revelations, we see the majestic horses in heaven, with one carrying a triumphant rider on a white horse representing victory and righteousness. Can you imagine how amazing that sight would be? These celestial beings are incredibly beautiful and powerful, but let's take a moment to think. While the Bible tells us about some celestial beings, there's so much that we don't know about the spiritual realm. Have you ever wondered about other celestial beings that the Bible doesn't mention? Can you picture the amazing things we will see in heaven?